Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Wanted to share, um, this is one of many that uh, I have planned every Friday. I'm trying to get these um, done. And um, they're called Collection of Lessons. And they're lessons that uh, I've learned. Um, lessons that I want to share. Lessons that have either changed or improved my life in some form. Um, things I didn't know. Things that, uh, you know, was never taught to me growing up. Um, you know, I'm over 30 now. And uh, I just find that, you know, if I would have known some of these earlier, definitely could have changed the outcome of my life. But, uh, you know, I'm happy where I am right now. But I wanted to share with these um, because a lot of people will coast through life and, um, you know, um, they're told so many things in life and then they find out later in life that they aren't true or they're different or, you know, I, I, that's, they could just enjoy life a bit more, basically. Um, so this is one of many. So the collection of lessons, you can just put me in the background. Um, I don't expect to be more than 10, 15 minutes. Um, but if you want to watch too, I'll put something on for the video. It might be me drawing and paint. It might be, you know, me showing you a, a chart or a graph or something like that. But if I do that, I will definitely say that I am. So to get started, this is called um, understanding personalities. And that was one of the things that I learned in the last five years here is understanding different types of personalities um, in myself, in others, um, in my relationships. Um, and to understand that, you know, different people have different um, roles, basically in how they respond and how they act. Um, so I read a book called Wired That Way, which showed me that, which was really great because if you're gonna be around people for all, your whole life, and if people can improve your life, um, it's best to understand those people. And you're gonna have a more fulfilling, more happy life if you understand um, how people are wired. And that's what this book shares. So I want to share this um, on my screen right now. I just have the book, what it looks like. And then on the right side, I have these um, four quadrants is what they're called. And just to go through them quickly, um, so you have a sanguine, you have a cleric, you have a phlegmatic, and you have a melancholic or melancholy. And um, these are also called temperaments in some books, or they're, there's different you know ways to put them. But basically what you kind of do in your mind, um, or when you meet someone, or when you understand yourself, is where are your strengths, where are the weaknesses, and how do you talk to them? So someone who's a sanguine is very social. Um, they're, you know, charismatic, they're outgoing, they're confident, that type of thing. So, so for instance, for Sanguine, um, that'd be somebody that's very outgoing and social. Usually that'd be like, you know, that person that, um, was very popular in school, usually, um, would be something like that, or someone that's, a, you know, the, uh, the clown, the class clown, or, um, somebody at work who, um, you know, is the one that talks all the time or whichever, not necessarily the one that's the leader. Um, that's actually more on the cleric side. So on the cleric side is somebody who leads, who is focused, um, who is confident, who's got to take control of the situation. Um, that type of thing is more the cleric side. Um, and then kind of going around the chart, melancholy um, is more like the one that overthinks and the one that's planning and the one that's um, detailed, like very detailed. Like So that's one of my strengths is um, since I'm you know, in the melancholy type of quadrant, being very detailed, especially in crypto or with numbers um, or with things around the house. You know, I want to get things done. I want to understand things. I want to fix things, right? Um, you know, so I, that's one of my strengths. And, uh, you know, you can see weaknesses over there. And then the last quadrant is phlegmatic. These people are usually, um, you know, calm, relaxed, at peace. Um, they could be considered shy, um, fearful. Um, they're kind of like the ones that accept anything, you know, in life or whichever. Um, so that's that's what I wanted to share basically in this video is um, understanding these four um, types of people and you know understanding that some people like need more you know information I guess need more thoughtfulness need more um, um, I don't know what you'd call it but basically if you understand people let's say you know I have this friend that's super cleric and uh, they like to you know take control, they like to plan things, they like to have, um, you know, let's go out for, I don't know, go out camping or whichever, right? Somebody who's in the cleric position um, will basically take control of that situation and be like, okay, yeah, I'll plan this for this and we'll do all this. And the phlegmatic person, which is the opposite corner of the cleric, will just, um, you know, kind of accept it and be like, yep, that's cool. Yeah, I'm good with anything, um, that type of thing. Whereas, you know, if you have four friends in that situation, the melancholy was like, well, how much does it cost? And, and um, you know, I got to think about um, my tent. Is it going to be cold? 
You know, is it going to be whatever? And meanwhile, you got the Sanguine being like, let's party. Let's do it. You know, like, so those are the, the example of four people in that situation. Um, but yeah, understanding that, you know, it's if you have two of the same, sometimes it doesn't go that great. If you have two clerics in the same room, they're both wanting to be, you know, a leader. They're both aggressive. They both want to take control. Um, you know, that's that's going to be a struggle. And usually you see that in relationships or in a group, right? Um, and it's interesting if you just like most people belong to more than one of these. And that's what the book shares. And the book is a great read. I'm definitely not doing it justice by talking about it. But uh, this is definitely one of the lessons that I learned is is to kind of place people and myself and others into these quadrants so that I can understand how best to enhance them, um, you know, like talk to them, um, you know, make them like, you know, super happy that, you know, oh, I know this person's cleric. I'll, I'll let them take control of this situation. I'll let them plan this because that's what they're good at and that's what they like, right? Um, so that's, that's definitely how that would work. And you can belong to more than one, like I was saying. Um, so like I'm usually in the more melancholy cleric side, so I like to take control, but I like to be detail oriented in there. Um, you know, I'm more detailed and more, um, you know, organized, whatever the strengths in the melancholy side are, um, than I am cleric. But, you know, at times that I need to take control, I can, right? So it's, it's kind of my secondary. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's basically how these quadrants work. Um, I definitely suggest reading it. And I definitely suggest, you know, taking a look at these um, types of charts. There's temperaments is another word for them or um, whichever. And because um, once I learned, so getting more into the example side, once I learned about these quadrants, things totally made sense, right? You know, I have a friend that's phlegmatic, that's super, you know, relaxed, calm, takes anything that it can be. And um, I have a couple friends like that. Whereas I have a melancholy friend. Um, so let's say, let, um, you know, I want to talk to them about crypto, let's say. Um, because a lot of my friends know I'm in that. Um, so the phlegmatic will just be like, well, you know, that sounds great. You know, I'll maybe I'll throw some money in there. And then, you know, I can give them, let's say, a, a, a text message that says, you know, this is how you kind of do it. If you want to get into it, do this, that type of thing. Phlegmatic will just be like, sure, sounds great. You know, I'll throw some money in there or whichever. Melancholy, if I give the same text message, um, they're going to be like, well, what's the fees? Like, what about, why would I want this? What's the difference between, you know, Bitcoin and Ethereum? I need to know, right? It's, it's somebody more melancholy. Whereas someone, let's say Sanguine, you know, here, here's some crypto. They'll be like, what's crypto, right? Like, why do I need this in my life? I'm having fun. You know, like, it could be totally different. The same text message to each of these quadrants. So understanding how to talk to them and be like, you know, hello, my phlegmatic friend. I want to show you, um, you know, how crypto goes. And I give them, let's say, a one hour presentation they just sit there and that's okay right and and then uh you know they they say you know they might ask a little bit of questions but uh they basically would be like yeah and all the numbers work out everything's great um you know i'm down and that's all you get from them you know if i try and explain to let's say my melancholy friend um why crypto i think is important and why you know having control of your money or whichever um i'm gonna get grilled the entire hour and i know this and this has happened to me um, you know, it's like you think you're, you know, when you're excited and everything about, let's say, crypto or whichever, and you want to share it with people, you quickly realize that depending on the types of personalities is going to be the types of personalities that you're going to run against and you're going to hit. Right. So you basically not like, like you have to build a case for crypto or whichever or whatever idea you're trying to share with your friends. But, you know, going into those situations that a melancholy person is going to ask you 50,000 questions. So, you know, is it. Is it kind of worth your time to explain it all if they need all that you know amount of work basically to understand it or is it better if you give them the information and let them figure it out right let them you know research this research that rather than you taking all the heat because you know it's not great for either the relationship or you know it's not even going to do them justice because you can't explain it in the detail that they want um so yeah and then another one like a cleric friend um, you know, where they're always looking to do something more, do some, you know, leader type stuff. And, um, you try and share something like this with them and they will quickly in their mind determine if they need it and how it can be used as a tool or whichever they're, you know, um, good at planning, solving problems, that type of thing. Right. Uh, um, and then, yeah, like I said, with the sanguine, you try and show them crypto, they'll be like, they might not go into the detail 
that you want to be them to be in, um, which is fine. But just understand that's who you're talking to, right? So I just want to share that. I want to share these uh, this book, this this chart. Um, definitely take a read because it has changed um, so many ways that I communicate with people, and that's basically how you're going to live in life is going to be with communicating with people. I know that with crypto, it's basically like you, you're, you're your own bank. You can do everything yourself. Why do I need people? Why do I need to talk to people? Um, in the end, your life is going to be so much more enjoyable if you can understand and talk with people the way that um, that they they understand life, right? So just wanted to share that. This is the first of many collection lesson, lessons. Um, I might have some bloopers every now and then, right? In my videos, I'd like the last one was super funny. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, just want to share that. Thanks. And uh, can't wait to make more of these um, and talk soon.